Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to take a look at the net install service that is built into Mac OS Server. Now, the net install service allows you to create images on your server that allow you to do a number of things. Uh, it allows you to boot from an image that might be on your server, which would come in handy if you had uh, certain images that you wanted to make sure that users are using the same type of desktop, that sort of thing, and maybe they have workstations that they could boot into. Uh, it allows you to create a net install image, and that is if you need to install uh, a new version of the OS onto whatever machines you might be in charge of, you can have that install come from that net install image. And then there's the net restore option, which is allows you to restore a Mac to a particular image uh, that you've set up ahead of time, and it'll wipe the computer and then put it back where it was. And so, uh, again, it's a, it's a handy um, service to have in Mac OS Server because if you're managing a lot of Macs, we have Profile Manager, which has us covered in terms of settings and those sorts of things on your Macs. But this allows you to also do restores and reinstalls and that sort of thing. So if you've got a lot of Macs that you need to image, that you need to install the OS on, you can do that right from the server here. And we're going to talk about how to make that work. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind as we get started. Uh, the first thing is that uh, you need to have an Ethernet connection to your server for this to work. Uh, because it does take up a lot of resources. It's got to have a, it's got to have an Ethernet connection. Uh, the other thing is is you can try to connect to the net uh, install images and such from Wi-Fi on client machines, but it is unbearably slow, and most times it'll just stall out on you. So you actually need those uh, clients to be on Ethernet as well for this to be effective. And you want to make sure that it's a switch to Ethernet. It's not just through an Ethernet hub. You got to have a switch uh, if, that you're plugged into that's going to allow you to. Uh, have access then to this to make it work. So uh, a couple of different things, you know, I mean, depending on how your uh, Ethernet is set up, whether it's a, th a thousand base T or a hundred base T, a hundred would give you up to 50, a thousand would give you 50 or more clients at one time. So there's a lot of throughput there, but you got to make sure that you've got your Ethernet connection uh, going. And then of course you need DHCP running for that to work, which uh, because the machine needs to get an IP address and you should have that running through your router or if you don't and you want to use server to set that up you can take a look at the previous video in this, in this series where I cover how to set up DHCP through Mac OS server. So now that we've got kind of some of those background things laid out let's go ahead and take a look at how to set up the service itself and then we'll go about uh, setting up an image. So here we are inside the net install service and you can see here, it looks like our other services. We've got our status information right here. You can see it's offline because I haven't turned it on yet. Uh, we've got this uh, area here for storage locations. And this is where you're going to be, be storing your actual net install images. So if you don't have a lot of room on your server itself, you might want to do it with uh, some kind of attached storage. It's up to you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and edit that. And you can see I've got uh, a couple of different locations here. You can see I've got the server itself and I can choose to store it on the server or if I had other drives connected I could choose to install them there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and use it on the server. You see I can do uh, images and client data here. I can do images only or client data only. And so I'm going to do both the images and the client data right here uh, for this. And you can see that what it's going to do is images are going to be created and placed in this library netboot folder here and client data will be stored in this particular netboot folder. You can see it has the, the image and the clients right there. So we're going to go ahead and say OK. And so now it's got the server set up and it will set up those storage locations for me so things will be ready to go. Now here I can enable net install on and you see here I can choose the ports. So if I had different uh, Ethernet interfaces I could choose which interface I wanted to use. In this case I'm just connected by Ethernet here so I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that that interface is enabled. And so I've already got that, so we'll come out here. Another thing we can do is restrict access to images if we want to do that. If I just uh, click on this here, you see that I have the option, let me say a plus there, to put in the MAC address of machines that I want to restrict access to. In other words, whatever MAC addresses I put in here for the machines, it will they will be the only ones that have access to my images that are a part of my net install service. And so, again, it just gives you a way to keep people off of the net install system that might mess up their machines or that you don't want to have access there and limit it to the ones that you want to control. So I'm going to go ahead and just cancel because I'm not going to put a restriction on there. 
And then once I get started, once we create our image, our images will stay right here. They'll show up in this box. Now you'll notice here on the connections area, you notice that we don't have uh, anybody connected, but when they are connected, you'll see the host name, IP address, status, and progress as they're working with your net install images. Okay, so now that we've got all that set up, one of the things we need to do is have an image set up for us. And so let's go ahead and talk about how to set up your images. Okay, now one of the first things you're going to need to do is make sure that you have an installation application on your Mac. And so you can do that by just coming into the Mac App Store here. And if it's Mac OS Sierra that you want to use, then you just click on this. And you go right here and you download a copy of Mac OS Sierra so that it puts it in the applications folder for you so that our system uh, utility can find it to begin to build the image. So you want to make sure you have one of those on there. So if you're using a different operating system, uh, you want to use El Capitan or something like that, you can do that as well. Just go up to your purchased area and scroll down and find it and then download a copy and make sure that that's in that folder. Uh, one of the things that I would do is just keep a copy of that around in case you want to make other images later. Uh, that way it's handy for you and you don't have to download it each time you want to make an image. All right, so now that we've done that, let me just go ahead and uh, put this down. What we do is just come in here and you'll come up to the menu, tools, and we'll do the system uh, image utility and that will launch it. Okay, once we've launched System Image Utility, uh, we're greeted with this screen here, and it's going to ask us to choose a source. And you can see here I have the option of package only with no OS installation, and that would be if I wanted to uh, install things like uh, like an Apple, like a script or maybe a particular application. We'll talk about that uh, in another screencast. But if I just uh, hit the drop down here, you can see that we already have the install Mac OS Sierra image there. And it's pulling that, you can see from the little pop-up from our Applications folder, because that's where we downloaded it. So it will look in that Applications folder to see if, if it can find the image. So we're going to go ahead and select that. And you can see it gives me the... Uh, the number there, you can see Mac OS, it's an install image, uh, everything looks like it's good to go. You can see it's 12.39 gigabytes uh, for the install. We're going to go ahead and say next. And so now it gives us the option to choose what type of image we want to use. And you'll notice here's our three major images that I talked a little bit about earlier. You have your net boot image where Macs can boot over the network uh, from a server-based disk image. So they're actually going to be running the OS on the server, seeing it on their machine. Again, it's different than home folders in that this would be a standardized version, not just something they would have in their home folders themselves. Uh, we also have the net install image that allows you to install the Mac operating system over the network from a hosted disk image. And then you have your net restore image that will restore a volume over the network from an Apple software restore disk. So that if you have a Mac that has a problem, you can go into the restore and it will go ahead and put a clean copy of the OS and any other little things that you asked it to do right on the, uh, the machine itself. So we're going to go ahead and just do a net install image this time and just say next. And you can see it asks us to agree with the software agreement, so we're going to do that. And so here I can add configuration profiles, packages, and post-install scripts if I wanted to. And so if I just hit the plus there, you'll notice I get this drop-down if I wanted to install my own scripts, I can do that. Or I can even customize the image. And if I just hit the customize for a minute, what it's going to do is bring up an automator window that I would use to set up a workflow to customize the package. And so I can come, come in uh, and look at different things. For instance, if I come to system, you see that I can customize a number of things. I can define the net uh, restore source if I'm doing that. I can create an image uh, from here. And if I just, you know, just drag these over here, uh, you, you can see I can add them. I'm going to say agree. And so I can choose then here to create a net boot image, net install, net restore, where I want to save it, the name, uh, network usage, description. So I can do this as well if I wanted to create an image here from Automator. I'm going to just get rid of that. Uh, I can customize uh, pa the packages. I can apply uh, system configuration settings. You can see there's a number of different things that I can do here. I can even choose if I wanted to to partition the disk first. So if I just put this in here, I can choose then to partition, partition the disk. I can say how many partitions I want and name them and have that all ready to go. And then when I actually set, set forward to uh, install the images and everything, then it will go ahead and do the partitioning first and then install the image. So again, it's, it's a workflow that you create to customize the net install image. In our case, I'm just going to get rid of that because I'm not going to do any customization. But just wanted to show you that that's an option. So we're going to go ahead and hit Next. 
and it's going to go to the next screen here. Actually, let's go previous for a second. And you can see here we have our system configuration. And so I can optionally choose how the system configuration options are applied. Uh, so again, I can choose if I if I wanted to define it, I could do that. If it's not defined, it's going to be applied to the system. But I could choose computer host names, and so a file uh, with the computer names and host names. I can generate a name for it if I wanted to, or match to the client after the install. I'm just going to leave that blank, but I do have the option to configure the system. And so now I can even set up directory uh, servers if I want to do that. If I just hit the uh, plus here. I could choose to use my uh, my own directory server here. You can see it says uh, that 127.0.0.1 just means refer to itself. And I can put an identifier, a username, and password if I wanted to add the directory server. I'm just going to leave it alone for our purposes and hit next. And then I can choose uh, automation settings. I can choose um, to create a network disk image which installs a to a specific target volume without uh, the user's interaction. So that the user wouldn't do anything with it. I would just say automatically install to a particular target volume and I can say erase the volume before installing and have the system default language and everything ready to go. Uh, again, I'm just doing a generic one here so I'm not going to do that, but I wanted to show you could make that happen. Let's say next. And so now I can tailor the image uh, below uh, to whatever I want to have it. So I can have it named whatever and I think I'm just going to say here uh, let's back up. We'll say install Mac OS Sierra. You can see it gives a little description that it pre-fills out. I can assign uh, a random image index um, if I want to do that, or I can assign a specific image index. Now where you would do that is if, if you were running a network and you wanted to make sure that you had uh, specific index numbers yourself to keep things straight, you could do that. Otherwise, you let a random image index be assigned. And so in my case, I'm not running uh, multiple images and you can see the image is going to be served from multiple servers if you had that happen. I'm not going to do that. It's just going to be from my server so I'm going to leave it alone but you could do that. Let's say next. And so now I can choose the computer models that can start up using this image. And so as you can see it's uh, with iMac there's all the different iMac versions in here and I can check on and off the ones that I feel should be able to use this particular image. And it's the same for minis, the Mac Pro, MacBook, MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. So I can really customize it down to different supported computer, uh, computer models that I want to have used. Let's say I don't want my laptops to use it at all, then I can just uncheck this box and laptops would not have access to this particular image. So again, just a, another way to further customize it. We're going to go ahead and say next. And so filter clients by MAC address. If I wanted to do that, I could filter the, uh, the different clients and have it set up that way. I'm not going to do that. Just say next. And so now it's going to create the image. And you notice it's going to put it in the image folder that we set up. And that's exactly where we want it to be. You don't want to switch it from there or the server won't be able to find it. So we're going to go ahead and say save. And it's going to start the image creation. It's going to ask me to authenticate. I'm going to say OK. And now it's going to start creating the disk image. And so it, it might take a little bit of time to complete. You can see it's not super long, but it's going to charge through this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let it finish here. And then I'll show you what it looks like once it's done. OK, so here we are. Now it shows that the image creation was successful. So we're just going to go ahead and click Done. And then now that we've done that, let's go over and take a look at the server app and load our image. Okay, so here we are back over on the server application. And as you can see, my image has automatically been loaded here. It's got a green dot on it, which means that it is available and can be used, which is a good sign. If I want to, if I just click on this, I can come down here and I can choose to use as the default boot image, uh, where that will be the default one if somebody just kind of loads into that as opposed to choosing one. And I can even edit the image settings right here. And if I just click on this, you can see I get more details on what this image is all about. I can choose to make it available over HTTP. And again, that's why the Ethernet is so important, or over NFS. And so in this case, we want to use HTTP. I can also uh, make the image visible to certain models. I can say all Mac models are only some. And this gives me another option to... Uh, as opposed to using the check marks I did earlier, select specific models I want to have uh, use this particular image. So I can customize the access in that way as well. And I can also restrict access 
two particular MAC addresses in here. So I can come back in and do some of those settings that we talked about earlier right here on a per image basis. And then again, it's given me an index and that was a randomly generated index. If I edit it, I can come in and change the index if I want to, uh, which will help kind of distribute the load uh, among multiple net install servers. So again, that's a little bit more advanced feature. I'd probably leave it on the random generated one, but it's up to you if you want to do that yourself. So I'll go ahead and cancel that and leave that alone. So as you can see, I've got this all set and ready to go. All I need to do now is throw the switch to start the service. And you can see it says now that it's available in the startup disk pane of system preferences for Mac OS clients. And what I can do is once someone has connected to it, again, I get all that information over here. Uh, so that gives you an idea of how to set up the net install service and how to set up specifically an install image, one that will just install uh, Mac OS, uh, nothing fancy on there or anything like that, though I did show you places where you can customize that. Uh, what we'll probably do in a future screencast is I'll go a little bit more in depth on how to set up more customized images as well as ways to um, boot into those images and what it looks like uh, possibly to do that. So. But hopefully this gets you started with using NetInstall. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.